I originally didn't want to sit down and, and tell you my story. And then I thought about how somebody saved my life and I felt obligated to tell my story. Um, nine out of the last 10 years, I've been living a lifelong dream. I've been a head basketball coach. I've wanted to be a head basketball coach all my life. I've coached some of the most incredible young people you can possibly imagine. You know, we've won 266 games, lost 57. In 2015, two of my former players got drafted in the NBA draft, Terry Rozier and Montrez Harrell. Um, this past year at Eastern Kentucky, you know, we won 12 OVC games. It's the second most in Eastern Kentucky history. And not just that, but I'm coaching like, I'm coaching kids who I love like they're my own kids. We got a special group of young people. Um, and because of the young people that I'm coaching, I was OVC coach of the year. I was NABC district 18 coach of the year. And, and during the last 10 years, I've got married to a person who I adore. And not only did I get to marry, um, you know, my, my life partner, we've had three kids. We've had two little girls and a little boy who's named after me. He's Archibald William Hamilton VII. It's incredible. Uh, June 12th, my, my life changed. Uh, my brother-in-law, who's one of my best friends, he had a stroke. Uh, he and I are the same age. We played college basketball together at Wake Forest. He's 39, I'm 39. And on that day when he had a stroke, you know, and to tell you about Steve, he's probably the healthiest guy I've ever met in my entire life. And that day I called my doctor in Georgetown and I set up a physical. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't had a physical since 2004 when I was playing at Marshall University. So I set up a physical, I go see my doctor, do all the things you do at a physical. We do blood work, he checks my heart, everything you can imagine, especially since considering the fact I haven't got one since 2004. And at the end of my physical, I showed him this mole that's been on the back of my ear all my life. And he originally thought it probably wasn't a big deal. So he set me up with a dermatologist. I go see my dermatologist. He looks at it, he cuts it off um, and says, you know, probably this is probably nothing to worry about. Um, the next week, the next Tuesday, I get a phone call from the dermatologist and he's, he called me and, he, and he, was, he said, listen, I'm shocked to tell you this. Um, I had no idea, I, I could not have predicted this, but you have stage two melanoma. And when he told me stage two melanoma, all I could think about is I've, I had a cousin who died of melanoma when he was 13 years old. And then on that Thursday, I'm in the oncologist's office. And he tells me, listen, you have stage two melanoma. The melanoma, the tumor in your ear has rooted in your ear. And it's possible that the melanoma has spread. You know, he said melanoma is one of the scariest cancers you could have because it's unpredictable. And then he kind of lays out what's next for me. But before he, he did that, I couldn't help but to ask him like, you know, doc, so what does this mean? What's the best case scenario? I mean, I, I'm 39, I'm healthy, I feel great. Like, you know, what, what's gonna happen to me? And he said, best case scenario, you're gonna have a major surgery and we're gonna remove your tumor and hopefully you never see me again. And then he says, worst case, you know, melanoma again is an is a unpredictable cancer. You could be in a box in six months. He said, but first, we're not even thinking about that. He said, you're gonna get a PET scan next week. And then the following week, you're gonna do surgery and we're gonna remove your tumor and then we're gonna remove the lymph nodes out of your neck. And then we'll run a biopsy and see, see what happens. And during that time, July was probably the longest month of my life. You know, I, I have a, three kids, I have a wife, I have an unbelievable job, I have a job I consider a dream job. And all I can think about is, am I gonna be able to raise my kids? Am I gonna see my, my two little girls get married one day? Am I gonna be able to teach my son, you know, how to play basketball? Um, and do I have to say goodbye to my wife? Do I gotta say goodbye to my parents, to my friends? And just all those thoughts are going through my head. And then, you know, all my life since 1995, I've been huge on setting goals. And, and I've got, you know, all these big goals and these things that I wanna accomplish. And what I've done is I've never treated my goals like a New Year's resolution. I've always treated them like, um, like a daily drive to push me to work harder and achieve more. And I've always written my goals down on a piece of paper 
and I've always put them up on my mirror so I can see them every day. And I have some of the craziest goals you, you can imagine. I want to win the OVC championship. I want to win the NCAA national championship. I want to write a best-selling book. I want to be a nationally known motivational speaker. I want to strengthen my relationship with God. And during this time, I'm thinking to myself, I got these goals on my mirror. Is my relationship with God strong enough? Have I done enough? And just the fear of all these things and not being able to accomplish these goals and these dreams um, made the whole month of July incredibly hard. Um, when I went in and had my surgery, um, I had no idea how, how major it really was going to be. Um, you know, when they did the, you know, I, I remember waking up after surgery, looking at my neck. I've got a five inch incision on my neck. They removed both lymph nodes. They removed the tumor. And then I had about a 10 day window when I had no idea what was going to happen. You know, I had no idea if the cancer from the PET scan was, had spread through my body, what the biopsy was going to say when they took my lymph nodes out to see if the cancer cells had spread. And, you know, it's, 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 been, a, it's been a tough month. And, you know, but I can tell you this, you know, when all this was going on, the only thing I knew to do was to sit down and I had to write a new goal, I had to come up with a new goal and no matter what was going to happen to me. And so I sat down and I made a new goal for my mirror and that was to beat cancer, tell my story and save somebody else's life like somebody saved my life. And I can tell you today that, you know, I have no feeling in my right ear. I'll never have feeling in my right ear. You know, they took my ear apart to remove the tumor. Um, but the feeling in my ear, I don't even care about. But, uh, you know, I can tell you today, though, that I don't have cancer, you know, and I survived cancer. And my goal is now is that I hope my story, I hope I can, I can help you. And this is what I'll tell you is get a physical. Go see your dermatologist. You never know what a simple mold could be turning into. You know, take care of yourself. Enjoy your family. Count your blessings every day. And take time to focus on you, your health, and your family. If there's the biggest thing that, that you take away from this is, you know, God is great. He's got a plan for all of us. And I hope my plan, I hope what he, he has in store for me is for me to help one person out there that's listening to my story. Thank you.